Hello guys, this is Sean from Korea and for this week's quantum weekly video, we'll be talking about why quantum computing is important and why you shouldn't invest in D-Wave. So for the first one, we are going to cover the interview of IUNQ CEO Peter Chefman. So on April 12th, he attended at McKinsey's Apple podcast with a few other key personnel from Standard Chartered. So a few takeaways from the podcast, Standard Chartered, which is one of the most powerful global financial institutions, is already preparing for the quantum age because of the following three reasons. So first one, alignment with the government goals. So it is supporting the UK government's ambitions to have the first quantum ready economy. So not only the companies or the investors, but also the governments are interested in quantum as well. And second reason is to be strategically prepared to have the quantum readiness that the financial industry needs. So financial industry is already looking for uh, to find the advantages of by having the good quantum computer already. And the last reason is the uh, in a belief that quantum computers can be the answer to reach net zero battery technology development simulations for new drug discoveries which the current classical computers cannot solve and uh, the biggest challenge for the quantum computing is that the timeline for when the quantum computers will reach full scalability, including the error correction is unclear. So that's the only challenge that the quantum investors should be uh, aware of. However, Standard Chartered believes that quantum computing will help all organizations to reach their goals or upgrade their capabilities. So it is interesting that quantum computers are not limited to one field, but can have a great impact across many industries, possibly all industries. So for my thought, major financial institutions such as Standard Chartered, Goldman Sachs, and Fidelity are not simply interested in quantum, but are preparing for the quantum era specifically. So quantum computers will pose a threat to modern cybersecurity and solve problems that classical computers seem impossible to solve, such as net zero cancer treatment, so quantum is important because they will affect not just one sector, but multiple, potentially all industries to be upgraded. But the biggest risk, as I mentioned before, uh, is the timeline for when scalable, error corrected quantum computers will be released is unclear. So quantum is going to happen, but the thing is, when will it happen? So my overall thought, the general public is still ignorant of quantum, but leading governments and corporations are already preparing for quantum age. So wouldn't it be possible to make good investments or profits by uh, investing long term in the number one company in the quantum field which i think is the inq so second topic d-wave earnings have released and d-wave uh, as a background has developed a superconductor quantum annealing device not the quantum computer usually talks about and it received great attention due to the number of qubits they claim to have more than thousand qubits in the early days and also by revealing that it had signed contracts with google and nasa but people acknowledge that their quantum computer is not a gate-based quantum computer that can be programmed universally but can only solve few optimization problems in a narrow field so it is not a quantum computer it's just a quantum annealing machine so they are currently developing a new gate-based quantum computer by using the superconducting technology but it is unclear when they release their uh, new product so it has been revealed that it has recently been struggling with a cash shortage and on march 30th the 2022 earnings announcement was announced as delayed because they needed more time to prepare for the financial statements and for the review process which uh, is regarded as bad thing to the current investors so for the financials 2022 q4 revenue was 2.4 million which is same as 2021 q4 and 2022 q4's revenue uh, came from uh, commercial customers at 72 percent which is increased by 62 percent from 2021 and for 2022 net loss q4 net loss was 12.5 million which uh, compared to 2021 on the same period was 13.8 and for adjusted EBITDA minus 14.5 compared to 2021 Q4's minus uh, 9.3 and 2022 overall revenue was 7.2 million and it's 14 increase from the previous year and 2022 D-Wave's commercial customer number increased from 57 to 67 and for their bookings they claimed they had a almost 80% increase from the 2021's bookings but they did not 
uh, disclose a specific number. And for 2022 overall net loss was 51.5, which in 2021 was 31.5. And for adjusted EBITDA minus 48 million compared to 2021's 35.7 million. So for my overall thought, why they uh, put an emphasis on the commercial customer count when the loss is getting bigger we could see that from the net loss and adjusted EBITDA getting increased than the revenue so why not disclose the booking number so I suspect uh, they want to hide the bad things and want to increase the good things which seems minor such as uh, commercial customers revenue and also commercial customer number and for liquidity uh, in the year end of 2022 their leftover cash was a little bit over 7 million and they raised additional 15.7 million from Lincoln Park equity line of credit by entering into a common stock purchase agreement to be issued and sell a 150 million amount of shares of its common stock over a three year period, which seems very bad for the current investors. And also on 2023, April 13th, D Wave entered into a $50 million four year term loan agreement with PSPIB. So those two news are very bad news for the current investors of D Wave because D Wave is taking action against investors due to lack of cash. So the, as a result, dilution of the existing stock value due to issuance of additional common shares, which is almost two times bigger than their current um, versus their market cap which is a little bit over 76 million and their financial situations are getting worse due to the loans that is um, as big as 50 million dollars so for 2023 outlook their expected revenue for this year is 12 to 13 million which is 67 to 80 percent increase from the last year so they expect to maintain this growth in revenue over the next several years and for adjusted EBITDA uh, it'll be expected to be less than minus 62 million but on 2022 adjusted EBITDA was minus 48 and on 2021 minus 35.7 so we see their losses are getting really big and their revenue is increasing but slower than their total loss so my overall thought is that even if the revenue increases, their adjusted EBITDA shows the revenue is too small and the losses will make the wave hard to stay in business. So I'll rather invest in IBM, which has a lot of money, or in IonQ, which has the best technology in quantum field, or in QTUM ETF, which contains IonQ as number two. So they have like 2% uh, of their shares as IonQ stocks. And it also contains other semiconductor quantum and related stocks, such as NVIDIA, Cadence Design Systems, Synopsys, AMD, Infineon, Airbus, Microsoft, Baidu, Intel, Alphabet, ASML, Onsemi, Alibaba, Applied Materials, Qualcomm, HP, Accenture, Lockheed, Martin, and Rigetti, and so on. So overall thought on this news is that it is a bit strange that D-Wave delayed the announcement of earnings and did not accurately disclose the booking figures. So bad hints coming out and although sales are increasing, cash too short and to make up for it, they're taking actions that is worsening their financial situations so their current market cap is 76 million but they're going to um, issue two times of those as common stock and also will have a loan that is almost uh, same as their current market cap so this is a very bad news for current investors of d-wave and it, it was stated that the number of customers is increasing but it will be difficult to guarantee the future with the current quantum annealing device so the important thing that i think for d-wave is when and how will superconducting gate-based quantum computers be developed? But they did not mention anything about this on this earnings. So overall review, I wouldn't invest in D-Wave. It's a bad choice for me uh, as far as I know. And it seems wise to take IBM or IonQ, which are currently doing well, or invest in QTUM ETF to be more safer. So that is all for this week's um, quantum weekly video. Please leave a like, subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys on the next week. Thank you.